How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. The truth is, <laughs> I am Iron Man. Wherever I go, he goes. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. And where are we? What's up, everyone? I'm Zach Williamson. This is the Culture Crab Podcast. I'm here today with Ross Cutsworth, my co-host. We're going to be doing House of the Dragon episode four. We're still waiting for our, our other co-host, Luke Goosen, so we can do Lord of the Rings. So that's probably coming next week. I like how the opening shot is right on her, the gift that Damon gave her. Yep. Opening shot right on the necklace. And she's also thumbing it a little bit. You know, she's playing with it. I think as she's taking these suitors, she's thinking about Damon. Yeah. She's thinking about Damon's because we saw Mm -hmm. like they have a connection for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, but beyond the blood connection, I guess. I am some Targaryen shit. My guy. This isn't even the first, uh, like uncle aunt relationship, whatever's going on kind of thing we've seen in game of Thrones. And in the same family, too, both Targaryens. That's what I mean, and the Targaryens yeah. especially, too. You know what you know, the other thing about this scene, too? Because what are these houses, again, that hate each other? The It's like the Brackens and... Blackwoods. Blackwoods, dude. Yep. So when Baratheon brought them both in, he had to know that this shit was going to go down, that they were going to start just talking no, shit to for, each other. For sure, for sure, because they have a history. <laughs> they were, talking they've been smack. Like rivals for so long. Oh, no, and then that guy was just, like, immediately talking smack to him, calling him dumbass. Yeah, a little background, too, for the listeners. One, so, they, so they're the blood of the first men. That's the, what, the Blackwoods? They both are. The Blackwoods specifically are from the Age of Heroes, and they ruled over the entire area where House Aaron now, the Riverlands. Where are you positive, but, though, that the other guys still believe in that? I thought that I thought that it came down to religion was one of the main reasons why they're split. Because yeah. when you're the first man, you believe in the old gods. Yes. And then the guy, the fool got stabbed. <laughs> that fucking idiot. Yeah, the Bracken guy. <laughs> they believe in the new gods. Yeah. That was that, the split. Yes. No, yeah, yeah. That, that is 100% was, too. And the Brackens, I'm pretty sure, were forced to take the new gods. And they eventually took it. Uh, it was in some kind of deal. I, I don't remember the exact details, but yeah, that made them split. And then they had this secret rivalry, apparently. So they have like a 10 year secret war going on the whole time that weakened both of their houses. And even though they supported Aegon when he was on his conquest of the Riverlands, they neither of them got the title of rule over the Riverlands because their houses were so weakened when they're fighting with each other. This kid's such a real one, bro. Just stab. I just (laughs) got to the part right when you were saying I got to the part where you stab the shit out of him. It just cuts back to it. And that's that's why I was cracking up. Bro, what do you do? What do you do if you're the older guy though? Because are you gonna kill a little kid? I mean, what are you gonna do, bro? You just died. Is what's about to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I get. get, He's dead. Stab went all the way penetration through his back too. (laughs) That's also that's changing things up from the books a little bit because. They fought each other in the books at a later time. And uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was reversed. The Bracken killed the Blackwood. And in this, the Blackwood killed the Bracken. Yeah, this is this is different. And this character is someone who, you're right, is prevalent later in the story. Can't talk about that, though. But yes. What's his name, then? It's Bob? No, uh, Robert? Amos. Amos. Amos, that's his name? <laughs> yeah. Amos Bracken defeated Samuel Blackwood in a duel with Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Visited... And visited the Trident in, when visiting the Trident in 112 AC. This is another thing I forgot about, too, with the Brackens and Blackwoods, is that the Blackwoods usurped them of their lands. <laughs> no, that's another thing. That was also way back. That was, we were talking about Age of Heroes era. Damn. They just yeah. conquered that shit. The Brackens said they were kings before that, and yeah, they got overthrown. Some bad blood there. That's funny. <laughs> I guess. Not if you're the fucking Brackens. Yeah, well, I mean, we yeah, you hear the Brackens, but hey, man, bunch of assholes. Clearly, all we've seen is one. He was an absolute dick. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of he's kind of funny though. <laughs> he's fucking with them. He was a dick though. He was a dick. Was that the first time we ever saw Storm? What was the castle of the Stormlands? Of the Stormlands? Oh, sorry, of where where they were just at with the Baratheons? Oh yeah, that's, Storm's End is the Stormlands. Storm's End. Uh, Heron Hall is a Riverland. Yeah, no, so that was Storm's End. Sorry, that's the name of the castle. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that was Damn. the first time we ever saw Storm's End in live action. Don't you see an outside shot of it when Robert's bastard son goes up to it at the end? This is crazy. I just Google Storm's End and the first picture is a CGI art thing. Yeah. So I don't think we've ever seen the external shot of it. Yeah. No external Bro, shot even. Okay. I'm looking and maybe there. No, nah, dude, I don't think there's been ever a legit shot of it because this should be a massive castle too. Baratheons were no joke ever. No, I because they come from the what are they the Duradon or they were just no. high up, man. And even even generations before this generation of Targaryens, they were tied into the family too. Robert Baratheon also was related to the Targaryens too. Yeah. Well, they yeah, all so they, yeah. so they overlap eventually a bunch. Okay, so on IMDb, it's Gerald Bracken, and in the book, it's Eamon Bracken, and it's Willem Blackwood instead of Samuel Blackwood. Samuel Blackwood's the book version, but I think Bro, they're the same is, characters. Bill, his name is Bill. Bill, Bill, Bra- <laughs> Bill Blackwood. I was, I got mixed up. I said Bob, and I was trying to think yeah, of you just said, fucking basic ass, yeah, white boy nicknames. Close. That's funny, but I think they're the same characters though because. The book yeah. describes the exact the same scene basically, except for the they're probably both a little Blackwood. older too. Yeah, I like what they did with though with this adaptation and this character. He will if it's the same guy. He has a he plays a factor later. Yes, in this yeah. era. Yeah. So that was a cool. I mean, that was cool lore building. This is what I love about this show so far is there's so much lore building and fleshing out areas we haven't seen and even fleshing out areas we've seen even the sets for king's landing and the red keep in this show and in this episode too they just had like this giant hall that they built and all it was for just a shot of them walking to gather around when damon's showing up imagine having that budget that's so (laughs) cool that's so much attention to detail i love it fucking damon's new armor was so sick too his new wig i don't know if that's a wig i'm assuming it's a wig it looks a lot better now (laughs) Oh, you didn't like the his first hairstyle? I honestly didn't notice anything about it. I didn't mind it, but I, this just feels more, it feels more suited to him. And I don't know, it just feels more believable to me. The first, some parts in the first couple episodes, his wig kind of looked, it just looked like a wig to me. I don't know. It just looked kind of obvious that it wasn't his hair. Whereas the girl who plays Rhaenyra, Millie Alcock, it looks pretty natural with her. Even in this episode, there was those shots where her hair's all the way down, straight down. It looks really natural to me. It looked pretty good. Yeah, he looks slick, dude. And with mm-hmm. the the driftwood, no, it, what is it? It's not the driftwood crown. That's the Greyjoy's. But the, his crown and everything, his whole getup. Then the next scene we jump to after that is them in the courtyard, and it it feels very brotherly. Viserys feels when he's on good ter- when him and Damon are on good terms. It feels like this is the most open he is. He doesn't have himself. to be a king as much. Yeah, he can be himself more. When he when they roasted, I Bro. felt so bad for, <laughs> for Allison. Allison. Yeah. Just hammered and they're both cracking up. Bro, <laughs> I was dying at that point. I felt so bad. She's just Same. a little girl trying to be all nice and formal. And oh my God, dude. That just immediately was, shit on her. And that scene just also felt very bright. Like it, at it, at the expense of hers, it sucks, but it felt very yeah. much like some brothers reconnecting and just. Yeah, man. That scene was good. I thought <laughs> this whole hep- episode was fucking great again. Yeah, um, what and this? then you have, you have the scene right after that, too, with Allison and Rhaenyra sort of making up a little bit, talking and sitting down. This is all in that same scene, holding hands again. And yeah, man, they're, the, what they're doing with this show, to me, from reading Fire and Blood and reading all the wikis and stuff and catching up, uh, probably a year ago is when I caught up, but... They are giving so much more depth to Alicent. In this episode, I actually felt really bad for her. And the way they use scenes in this show with sex, too, is feels way different than what they do with Game of Thrones. The way they directed it, it felt both scenes when they were happening at the same time. And the score was fucking phenomenal, too, again. Yeah. And that they both didn't have to say anything. And they were saying so much with what they meant. There was real passion and connection between Damon and Rhaenyra. And then you could just see on her, I felt so bad. And there was a part, too, where the rat was looking down on her, too. That was some symbolism. Wait, what? I did not see that. You didn't catch the part with the rat, man? Yeah, there's, there's a rat? A scene. There's a scene with a rat where they look. she's laying in bed. It might have not been in that scene. It might have been when she was in her bedroom. And she looks up, and there's a rat looking down at her. And I was thinking, oh, man, that is some symbolism for sure. What the fuck? Wait, what does that symbolism do? Regardless, I, I believe you about the rat, but I didn't see it. Just her family, man. Oh, oh, shit. That's what you... Okay, I get what you're saying. 
Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, with her that, dad. Yes. And... Yeah. Yeah. Being a rat. Being a rat. And... <laughs> yeah. I mean, man, it just could mean stuff for the future, too. No, that that whole sequence was very packed with symbolism, just showing the difference between their modus operandi. Allison does things for duty. She doesn't really express herself. She just does what she thinks is going to be good for her family. Mm -hmm. You know, she she doesn't act out on her impulses. And Rhaenyra, you see her having sex and she's having sex for well, she doesn't technically have sex, but she's engaging in sexual acts for pleasure. She's not really thinking about what the greater consequences of her of her actions are gonna be. Yeah, bro. She's just being a teenager, as she yeah. should. You know another yeah. scene too. I'm at I'm back at 1718 and that part when they're in the the part where Damon and Rhaenyra are talking after they had that feast and they're by the the weirwood tree. Sorry. Yeah, the weirwood tree, that scene. There's so much color, man. Even this there's one frame that they had zoom out and they're looking down he's sitting in the chair and she's looking behind him and it looks like a painting man there's so much just color and attention to detail to the set and i love it yeah it's beautiful it was at, if you want to if you want to look at the scene it's like 1745 there's a part where he sits down and then it he's sitting in the chair and the camera is about 20 yards back looking at both of them not like a point of view shot yeah i like how they talk in high valerian to each other as well it's a yeah yeah it's great yeah it's also a really good political tool to because mm-hmm. you saw no so many times, that. yeah, in Game of Thrones when people were talking in the courtyards, they'd have little it, the maids would be coming by and be overhearing shit. And this, it's just the Targaryens. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised we haven't seen a scene where Viserys is talking Valerian to anyone because we've only seen it so far with Rhaenyra and Daemon. Yeah, bro, that shit has to be hard. Damon was giving her good advice, though, the whole episode up until that point when he was trying to use her. Yeah. No, I agree. You, If you're going to be a queen, he's showing her what you're going to have to win over these people. They don't want her. And just about how you need to use marriage and love, you can use that as for political gains, too. He's trying to teach her the same stuff. It's the same lesson that Viserys is trying to tell her, too. Yeah. Has been trying to tell her. And you see that she's, no, I don't don't give a fuck what they think and... Yeah, he doubled out, doubles down on that point. That you should care what they think because you're going to be ruling over them. You got to know what they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's already also showing him down there. He's trying to show her maybe that, hey, the high towers are at work. Otto's at work right now planting seeds for a- for her brother. Yeah, bro. What do you think about that? About him being expelled? I also like Rhaenyra now has a seat at the table. That's cool. That's development. Yeah. yeah. What do you what do you think about Otto being is expelled? It's the right fucking move, man. I mean, Viserys actually this episode fucking killed it. Hilarious. He was hilarious at parts. <laughs> he was stern even with his brother. It was yeah. just a good episode for Patty, who's the actor. Yeah. And I don't think he made a bad move all episode except for even in the end he still gave Vernira the set and said, "Nah, I don't trust you." <laughs> You're lying about something. Some, even if it, he still sent that stuff in her, and if she drinks it, then he's going to know that she had sex with, her, with, with someone. He's yeah. going to assume it's Damon, but... Well, it was just in case, you know, peace of mind. Yeah, man. It's a I good mean, precaution. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a good precaution. It was a good move. And what he, how he dealt with Otto, I think at first he was a bit flustered, but then how he ultimately dealt with it, he connected everything, and he listened to his daughter... And she ended up listening to him, too, and said, yes, okay, fine, I will get married. I will do this. Yeah. And so they came to an agreement there. And, dude, yeah, I thought you handled it really well. This dude, no matter... It, but the thing is, there's there's different ways to read that scene. And I think it's interesting because some people probably out there think that Otto's not that bad. And maybe he is, he was doing all these things to help his his friend. Because they are friends. Him and Bissarus yeah. are friends. Well, and the thing is, Rhaenyra is lying. Everything she Otto was lying. saying was the truth. Everything yeah, he was saying she, was the truth. She gaslit the fuck out of that situation. <laughs> yeah. And it worked out for her. Good she on her. Is, she's, she's lying that she, they didn't have sex, but they yeah. definitely did it definitely would have happened if, if Damon didn't, you know, cut that off. Yeah. She definitely wanted it to happen. That's for sure. But the thing is, he did 
have people spying on her without the king's consent and without Rhaenyra's consent. So that's kind of sus immediately. And taking that into account with all of his past actions with setting up Allison and pretty suspicious. And I, it makes sense. Yeah. That, yeah. I think it was the right move. What I was telling you earlier is I think Damon's playing some 40 chess here too, because he knows that this is a way to also expose Hightower, but then cause this situation again with Viserys by, because he wanted her to get found. He wanted, he took her hair, the thing off of her hair. Yeah, he was pretty fucking drunk at that moment, but he knew he knew what he was doing in that situation, and it backfired. They said it in the post interview too. I love that they added, they actually fleshed all that out and yeah. said, yeah, it, when it backfired on him and she was into it, then he realized it wasn't a power trip for him anymore. It was because she was in control. Yeah, she liked that, and then he deep down he's thinking, is this is wrong? Do you think uh, Viserys is going to name as the next hand of the king? I think probably that Lionel Strong guy is the person that makes the most. Bro, yeah, it's going to be Lionel. He makes the most sense. He clearly actually is looking out for Viserys' best interest so far every time that he's been questioned. Yeah, and we've we've stated that as well in past mm-hmm. episodes. Yeah, and we were talking about before that he would be a good hand. And so yeah. that, that to me makes the most sense. One of our followers sent me something and said... That he thinks it's interesting that like this certain Reddit thread, everyone was seeing scenes differently, like had different perspectives. I know, I was I was reading that before we started. It was just basically presenting a two sides to every pivotal scene. Why do people episode. have to see it as there's two sides? Why can't it just be that Damon is trying to show he's trying to teach her a lesson, but then he's also acting in his own interest. It can yeah. be both. It doesn't yeah. have to be one or the other. And I think it's it's complex. And it is. Yeah, and it's complex. It's not just two dynamics. It, And this is the thing. Oh, man, fuck. I love it. This, this I love one, it. Listen, listen to this one. Was Rhaenyra's sexual encounter with Sir Cole a playful, mutually reciprocating night know, of passion? Uh, or was it a Harvey Weinstein-esque abuse of power? Da- Come on, bro, dude. No. This guy folded. He he. I would have folded faster, but he folded. What was that? Two minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he sat there and thought, "Shit, man, I could die, but you know, I got a chance I'm here doing, at this." Yeah. I think the actress even said, "I don't know if this was in the post thing, but it was definitely in an interview." Or I read this after that. The actress Millie said that she would prefer Damon. This was just a situational thing. He was the right actress. There. Yeah, Millie or Rhaenyra. Millie was talking as what the character was oh, thinking. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. was just, dude, she thought she was about to have sex, and you were the next dude who's right outside her fucking door. And he's a good-looking dude. I don't blame her at all, man. And they have chemistry, too. Yeah, and he totally has gone hard for her, man. He saved her life and everything, too. So, yeah, I, yeah they, they it, that totally all makes sense, too, man, for sure. It's not Harvey Weinstein-esque. Get the no, fuck no. out of here. Oh, my That's God. A That's such a job. bad take. Anyone who thinks that, you need to... You need to relax. Reevaluate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could he could have said no. He still could have probably in the end. And he didn't do that, dude. Dude was down. Oh, he was very down. Bro, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can see him debating though, like I know. I know. Viserys will cut your nuts off if you found out about this. He would castrate him for sure. Yeah, man. One hundred percent. And then he Bro, you're uh, risking it all. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Don't blame him, though. Don't blame him. I mean, yeah. I mean, Millie Alcock in real life is 22. So this is, that's, this that's is, fair. This part, this is what this other part of this post says. Is Viserys raping Allison against her will, or is she lying to him that she enjoys their sex because of a warped sense of duty? Oh, damn, dude. Yeah, that one is, uh, that one's just fucked up. I don't even really have any. She clearly definitely feels it. Not yeah. clearly, but she definitely feels duty. And they showed that, I thought, in the part where she doesn't look like she's enjoying it at all. And then she looks down and smiles at him. That's, yeah, man, that's that's tough. That's fucked up. God yeah. damn. That's shitty situation. Yeah. Where the fuck did he... Uh... Like, there is a lot of scenes, I guess. Okay, I don't agree with the Sir Christian Cole, but there's definitely... But all these, all these, it's both. I feel like that is both. The thing with Damon, he was being kind to Rhaenyra. He's teaching her lessons. And then he's also using it for his own gain. That's classic Damon. And he wants to get back at his brother. He's still yeah. a spiteful guy. <laughs> he's a petty And bitch. he loves his brother. He's petty, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did Rhaenyra lie about what happened with Damon or is her account at least technically? It's not technically truthful at all. 
Okay. She straight up lied on her mama, <laughs> on her dead mom, bro. Okay, about her having sex. She did not yes. have sex. She but, had sex with Damon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah, it, this is a lie, man. Cater- I'm categorizing that as a lie. Yeah, you didn't yes. have sex with them. You definitely were getting it on in a brothel, and there was a lot of witnesses, and you ended up having sex with your king's guard. Bro, that's what no, I was thinking. No one knows about that. And you know what was great, too? The rest of the episode, they were doing a lot of shots of Rhaenyra, but then you'd see Sir Kristen Cole right behind her, the way the camera was set up. It was almost focusing on him, too. Yes. Was, man, there was, this, this show just has masterful direction, camera work, sets, <laughs> writing, meanings. I can't believe some of the complaints I were reading was reading that characters were too gray. This is this is just so perfect, bro. This is too like, gray? That's what, that's what a lot of the bad reviews that I was reading before the show was that there's no one who's truly good. And I'm just thinking, well, that's Game of Thrones. Bro, that's the best part. Yeah. I yeah, love that. And, and this... This is okay. Remember how last week I was saying I think that there's going to be something that in this story, in this iteration of of the Dance of the Dragons, because this is all different. Because Allison and Rhaenyra were way different characters; they had a way different dynamic in the book. But this version, I was saying, I think there's something Rhaenyra is going to do that is going to cause the rift. And I think what it's going to be is this: she lied straight up to Allison. She even, she should have known as soon as she said your grace or whatever she said, my queen. She said something like that. And it was the first time she didn't say yeah. it in like a mocking way that we've seen in the show so far. All right, everyone. So we're going to take a slight little break for some advertisements. That is going to cause a rift because Allison straight up believes her right now. Even said, said to her dad, she wouldn't lie about something like this, man. Yep. She's got everyone fooled, dude. So this is to me the opening. This is the beginning of what could cause a huge rift between them. I know, but the only way for that... Ah, fuck. It's the only other person... Who would she believe over Rhaenyra, though? Damon didn't admit to it. He didn't say no either. But what if it came out and he said, I didn't do it? Witnesses say that didn't happen. They get, you know, they get more witnesses. She takes the... She drinks the abortion tea. But she just has then, to throw that out. But dude, just go out on your porch and just huck it into the ocean. After you drink it. I guess that's true. You can I mean, that's the dispose of it. I, you don't have to let anyone know what happened to it. Whatever. This one, too. This is another another thing from this Reddit post. Is Otto trying to look out for Viserys by informing him about Rhaenyra's transgression, transgression? Or is he trying to look out for himself? And they said that in the scene, in the extra scene with the showrunners, they said he saw this as the perfect thing that he needed really to cause is something that fell into his lap is what the showrunner described it as yeah and yeah i don't think he wants to do this but he doesn't want to tell viserys this stuff but it is to his advantage so that to me also is man i mean if you're pipping off your old own daughter dude how can we not sit here and think that this fucking guy isn't scheming come on he yeah he played it great though he really did play it very innocent and Viserys was flipping back and forth too when he was mad at him for a bit. Oh, bro, that free folk meme was it was so good. Dude. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. had me dying. <laughs> He's like, "Thank you, Viserys. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chef. Yeah, that was good. That's also a great show. If you're talking, you're referencing the bear right now. No, Key and Peele. Oh, right. Yeah, Key and Peele. Shit. Yeah, they did this other show too. That's so no, I've seen right the right. bear though. That that's a great show as well. The yeah. guy from. I have no idea what he's from, but that Shameless. was the first time I've ever Shameless. seen them. And I've never watched Shameless, but he was great in this fucking show. Yeah. Anyway, that's a little <laughs> off subject. Yeah. Did okay. This is actually this is okay. This is what we're talking about, and this is we've been talking about this one. Did Viserys send Rhaenyra the abortion tea as a gesture of goodwill or as a test of her purity? See, that is what I'm saying. That could be. It could be a plot point. They could use this. I think it was a test, or I think it was a gesture of his goodwill. I think I oh, fuck dude. Why would he? I don't think he's going to scheme against his daughter like that though. No, like, he I think is he, always I looking think he's out for gotta her. be sure, man. Hey, yeah. you said you did this. We'll drink this anyway. Then, you know, yeah. it's not going to hurt you then either way. And even if she, yeah, even if she does drink it, then it's just like, all right, whatever. Like, let's just lie about it and move ahead. 
I don't know, man. My This episode two for me makes me think that Viserys, he actually does pay attention to a lot of details and he tries to be good to all of his friends and the people he loves, but then stuff now he can't ignore. Damon, he can't ignore this anymore. He's tried so many times. Otto, he was ignoring it for a while. He, And then now he's saying, you got to go. Even with his daughter, he could still be thinking, well, what would be to her gain and not admit this? He's still, I, I actually think that he's becoming... As the show has gotten on, he's just a lot smarter now. He also seems a lot weaker. And what's it? I mean, bro, you see his fucking hand. Yeah, we, his back and stuff too. I just mean he seems like he's speeding up and getting older. And I remember in the yeah. in Fire and Blood, he was really fat too. So I wonder if they're gonna develop to that now as he's getting older. You know what I, I mean, mean? He's definitely gonna be less mobile. And in the preview of the next episode, you see him like fucking I didn't on his the, deathbed. God damn. Wait, bro, they showed that? Why'd you... F- I didn't fucking watch the uh, next thing, dude. Bro. <laughs> I just tweet him out. I don't watch him. Okay, okay. He's not on his deathbed, but he's leaning back like this, looking sickly. Okay, well, I mean, bro... Yeah, I yeah, mean... I didn't, I didn't think he was going to make it out of season one, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know he's going to die next episode before the time jump. That can't... That, hmm. that must be then... That means that the time jump must be next episode because yeah. he's still going to live. This is a spoiler, though. I can't talk about this, but... He should still be alive for a while longer. Does the tourney where the blacks and the greens are established, is that happen before the time jump or after? Yeah, the, before, ta- the blacks and the greens will be after the time jump, but it's before it's before he dies. Yeah. Okay. So we got a bit still. All right. Enough of that. No more you know what I'm going to talk about, too, just because we're talking about spoilers? Man, okay. I got <laughs> okay. But no, 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 no. I'm just yeah. saying, like, this is in reference to seeing them out in the wild. And this isn't a spoiler for anyone listening. I was just going to tell you a story specifically about how yeah. fucking last night, man, Holy I saw shit. this. This must have been a screenshot from the next tr- the next episode, you know, like what you were just talking about. But so they take a picture of one of the babies and... I'm not going to say who the name of the baby is or anything, but it was the way that they talked about it. It's, hey, here's this. This is what they're going to fucking do in the story. They were talking about what happens to this baby who they're going to marry and all this. And that is a huge spoiler. And the way they wrote it, they wrote the titles of her husband, everything. And it's like such a massive spoiler. And I just don't understand why it counts out their need retweets so bad that you're going to go spoil. Why? What even was the point of saying that? You could just said who the baby is. And that's it. That's all you need to say. You don't need to say what happens to them. And I'm sitting here, you know, I've read Fire and Blood. I've tried so hard to forget major plot points, bro. But I'll even get people. I get DMs all the time who will say, hey, man, have you seen that episode where Joffrey reveals in, in you know, I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah. It's talking to Sansa or whoever the hell he's talking to about this character in, in this show in House of the Dragon. I'm like, Yes, dude. I fucking know, man. I've been... Why are you reminding me, man? I'm trying to forget. Bastards. He just comes yeah. with the territory. Bastards, bro. Also, <laughs> this... this We cannot talk about it, but there was one scene in this episode that was such crazy foreshadowing that I am shocked that those kind of accounts haven't just tweeted it out and spoiled it for everyone. But there was one scene, dude. It was... Oh, my God. Even the visual cue with it was what happens what is what is going to happen? Can't believe you put that in. It was so sick, actually, that they slid that one in there. Wait, is it a scene with Allison? No, I can't tell you who it's with, bro. I can't say it on air because it's such a massive spoiler for this Fuck. character. I'm oh, gonna no. tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you the timestamp. Okay. But you know what? I'll just say the timestamp, and anyone who's listening, if you want to go look at the timestamp then that is on you. But I'm telling you, it's a huge, it's a huge foreshadowing for where this show is going to go. Nothing is random in the show, man. That's what I mean. I the show is so good with their details like this, a throwaway detail, but it means so much. It's like 2350, I think. Oh, wow. They actually do what I'm talking about. They flash it a few times. Yeah. Three times so far in the past minute, they show exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's times. move on. Let's move on. 24003. We got to move on. Moving on. Let's, but yeah, dude. Uh, they, let's purge it. Purge it from my mind. I mean, dude, this one for me, it's just, I've seen, I mean, it's like ingrained my memory at what happens. So sorry, dude. That's what I'm saying with the rat too, man. All the stuff that they're doing in the show, they all, it's so Game of Thrones. It feels such early Game of Thrones and 
with George R. R. Martin's touch, all these attention to detail. Dude, it's phenomenal. I'm enjoying this show so much. There's nothing else on TV as good as this right now. I'm going to just straight up say that. No. Yeah. This is phenomenal stuff. Didn't notice until this episode, ta- the tapestries, it's all dragon stuff and people having sex with dragons and orgies. And it's interesting because they showed a bit of it right before they had the actual orgy scene. Yeah, man. It's in a very well-directed episode overall. Spicy. It was a long episode, too. It was probably the longest episode of the season, hour and 10 minutes. Yeah, I think this one or the first one. The first one the first was long as yeah. hell, too. First one was pretty long. Yeah. It was like a whole, a whole ass going. movie. Yeah. You know, okay, you know what? This is my last, this might be my last major thing that I want to talk about with this episode. Okay. Is every time they talk about the prince that was promised, it just disappoints me. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking to... I just, I feel... This is a whole different story, and it feels like its own thing. And then they tie it back to this. When I, now, whenever I think back to that, I'm like, "Well, what the fuck did they just do? They, the prince that was promised, what did they even do? Neither of them actually killed the Night King. Yeah, and they're talking about this how it was one of them who was supposed to kill the Night King. It was foreseen. It was written in the Song of Ice and Fire. I don't know what to think about it. Every time I see it, it just reminds me of that. And yeah, well, I I get what they were doing. The showrunners. They're trying to tie it to what had already happened for sure. But then it just like reminds me of the end. And in the end, who we yeah. was the prince that was promised? I guess both of them. Both of them. That's kind of what they set up. Because then it Masande bring up the point that the interpretation of it is gender neutral. So and it also well, yeah, it's not plural guess, or, yeah. or singular. So it could be That's the princes, princes or princesses promise. Okay, so it was them. So it, it was, was both of them. them. Even though neither of them actually killed the night. Did it. Shit. They did. Anything, I mean, they, bro, they, they fucking there's... gave him the tools to get past the wall. Dumbasses. <laughs> well, yes, that is true. But without the dragons, man, they might have got, they might have folded quicker. They might have even had. That was such a bad plan. Why? That was teary. We don't need, I, don't, I really don't want to talk about it at I know, all, dude. I know, like, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to waste time talking about that, but. What I'm saying is, is every time they they mention it again, it just makes me think about that. And I know, I know, it needs to be told because it's part of the lore building with this. Yeah, yeah. It's possible that this knowledge could get lost in this generation or the next generation too, depending on how things go with this show. Well, the whole Targaryen Empire is kind of fucked after this. Well, I just meant like the knowledge of this specific thing, because yeah. Because of we certain can't people. talk about it, yeah, <laughs> certain events, yeah. yeah. I got, you. I got nothing else to. Do. I mean, this is a good scene with Rhaenyra and Viserys talking and talking about duty, and they both come to an understanding. Man, it's a good episode overall, and I like. Oh, that Zach gets kicked out, bro. I support the movement. Maybe Arya is a Targaryen secretly. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Even... <laughs> Will not even entertain the idea of that. Hey, hey. no shot. That's why her and John got along so well because they're both Targaryens. They who, got it along better than any of the other. Siblings. I hate that you're gonna make me talk about this. Then who, who <laughs> would have fucking who would have heard mom dad been her mom been? There's no, there's no, there's literally unless there's a bastard Targaryen that don't even bring up that book shit either because that doesn't matter. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not gonna bring that up. Agor <laughs> Rivers or whatever his name. Is. Yes, Tom. Does don't yeah. even don't even. Is it Rivers? Or no, 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 no. That's somebody from Dance of the Dragons. I was thinking of a. Uh, it was it's like a, young he has Aeg. a bastard name. It was like Young Egg yeah. or something like that. His name's Aegon. It is Aegon. It is Aegon. It might be Aegon Rivers. But anyway, I'm not. I don't want to talk about that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we got any more fan questions before. Or no, Young Griff is their on. name. It's Young Griff. Just to clarify, but let's keep moving on. Yeah, because that was. Griff. Dumb. Yeah, fan oh, questions. I forgot. This is actually it. some news. We have a little bit of news, and then I'll I'm gonna keep looking for fan questions. Um, this is interesting. Some Game of Thrones news specifically. Yeah. Emily Carey, who plays Allison, says that there have been talks now of them coming back for season two. So to me, the only thing that makes sense is that could be a flashback scene or some sort of parallel tying to a certain scene with the with the older actors that were about to be introduced here within the next two episodes. Yeah. You agreed? That makes sense. I agreed. Yeah. Because and she still says they don't know if they're actually going to do that, but I think they maybe they're thinking about this now because they both been so popular and they both did a great job. 
And even both of them, when they said they got cast in these roles, they didn't think it was going to be this big of a role that they got. They thought maybe they were going to be in some flashbacks or a couple episodes, but I actually think it's so great how they flush out the background for these two characters and what it's going to mean. This whole season just feels like a prologue for what is going to go down. Yeah, they've both been so good, too. They've Mm -hmm. been killing it. Great. Yeah, man, they're going to this is going to be they're going to get some award. They're going to blow up. This is going to be great for them, for their career. And they're going to probably get some award recognition at the Emmys next year, for sure. Oh, dude, this is going to killing it. This is going to have a crazy run at the Emmys for sure. If they finish it strong. But yeah, I've, I have faith. Okay. Bro, come on. It's only season one. It's not like know, they have to I wrap know. up that many storylines and shit. I know. <laughs> the fourth comment on here is just somebody posted a picture of this person holding up a Roll Tide sign. Someone said, y'all think Damon orchestrated the whole thing with Otter? Do you think it was Missera pulling the strings from the shadows? And I just think it was both of those things. <laughs> that was from Flashy. Oh, Nolan X... Cohen, that's his handle. Miss Arya, like the his, white, yeah, the girl at the his end, mistress. Yeah, it, well, okay. So for one, it was very clear that they hadn't seen each other in a long time. Yeah, so they're not working together in that moment. No way. But I think what they're saying is, was Miss Arya? No, she didn't have any part pulling him into the brothel. They went there. On she their has own her own accord. spies, and yeah. of course, she's going to have spies at a brothel or people at a brothel. She used to own them. She probably even maybe still owns that one partially. We don't know what, any of the details yet. Yeah, and of course, I would if I were her, I would get paid to take money to spy on stuff for information. That's just another way that she can manipulate things too and have, be a factor in all this. Yeah, and I think Damon just knew that. Hey, if I take if I take her in here, I take her hair off. I take her, you know, her thing off. People recognize me already. He's been to the brothels before that it was going to he was hoping that it was going to cause people to talk anyway. And he also probably figured already, knowing that Hightower is a snake, that that he was probably spying on him or on her anyway or on the brothels. He's that kind of person that he has information out there. He's got people everywhere. He's a little finger type character. And Damon knows this. So he probably was just hoping all this would happen. I don't think that he is the one who sent the spy, if that's what this is implying. I don't think yeah. that he knew that she was connected to that at all. I also don't think he's really playing 4D chess. I don't think Damon's that kind of person. I think it was kind of like clumsily handled. I I think he thought it was a possibility that this could happen, but I don't think he thinks things through like that well to that extent. Mm, because I think he knew this. I think he knew that some stuff was gonna happen. Yeah, but, but I, I don't, don't know. I don't, I don't think he knew how the information would get to them. That's what yes. I'm saying. You agree? I, I don't, and I don't think he knew exactly how it was going to shake down. <laughs> that boy was hung over his shit, man. He yeah. wasn't even thinking <laughs> about any of that in the morning. No, he played the scene how he would, though. Yeah, and I do love his advice that he's saying to me, he's saying, "Dude, you're the law of the land. Who cares what any of these lords think?" Yeah, we're Targaryens. <laughs> you got the dragons. Yeah. You have unlimited power, basically. Okay, this is from Heart of Emojo. She's asking, with both of us having read Fire and Blood and I haven't read the whole goes I, on. I haven't read the full thing. But you I read yeah. the full thing. Okay. I knows I know everything that happens. Because I read I know everything. <laughs> no, I read <laughs> I didn't mean to come off like that. I'm just saying I read the whole wiki. <laughs> That's all I'm yeah, saying. So, so you know the, all the information and yeah. you have, I've read Fire and Blood. Yeah. Are there any parts that you worry may go astray via adaptation? I'm going to be honest. I think that they're handling it pretty good, man. I mean, even like I've, I've said on the pod that I think how they're ha- handling Allison specifically, that is so much more depth to me. And even actually... In the book, Fire and Blood, Viserys seemed nicer, but this seems more realistic even in that situation, being the king, what everything that he's been doing so far. I think he's smarter in this adaptation, too. He does seem smarter. They kind of just have him be, he's just like this fat, plump guy who's just kind of trying to do the right thing with everyone, not really making hard decisions. But here he's making decisions, man. And I don't remember maybe if he did that with Otto. He probably did. I can't remember. That's the other thing, too that I can't remember everything that went down anymore. And I'm trying not to. I really don't want to go and research everything again. I'm trying to just see how the story unfolds. And even the show is adding details that weren't in Fire and Blood, like with passing down the knowledge of the Song of Ice and Fire. 
Yeah. And that there was another prophecy there, a vision. I mean, sorry, but yeah, man, I think they're handling it really well. And the scene too with Rhaenyra and her uncle, I don't think that was necessarily in fire and blood either, but it makes total sense. The stuff with Sir Kristen Cole makes total sense. There was fire and blood. Um, there was something similar in Fire and Blood, but it, it played out a little differently. Uh, with Sir Chris and Cole? Yeah. No, with Dame, Damon and Rhaenyra. There was oh, rumors well, was, that... That's that, what I'm saying. You're saying yeah. rumors. It's like it's like hearsay. It's not actually yeah. confirmed. And then they went with it in this version, and I think it makes sense. And to me, it's canon now. It makes sense. Yeah. And the stuff with Sir Chris and Cole, I think, was a little bit different how it went down. Yeah. Which I can't remember, and maybe I'll go look into it a different different i'll maybe i'll look into that detail and come back to you but i think they're handling it really well yeah so far it's pretty great age differences all make sense i'm okay with the ages being similar now between allison and rhaenyra allison came off like a cersei style character in that book yeah yeah and she still could get to that and yeah. i would be hey man it would be believable at this point now i'm seeing i could see the progression from what they've shown now is what i mean She's been going through some trauma, so... And it's not like Cersei was always the way she is in Game of Thrones when we see her. Uh, She's a pretty evil lady from the beginning, bro. (laughs) She was okay with a kid getting tossed out the window. No, no, no. I'm saying when she was was Allison's age. She Well, she said... She she talked... Remember, she had scenes even with Sansa where she was telling her how she had to go through all that. Yeah. Learning the real... Learning how it really is for being a woman in power like this. And she had to go through the same things with Robert Mm -hmm. having to have sex with him when she didn't necessarily want to, just like Allison and Viserys. It's a very similar dynamic. I think at one point she said she did love Robert. Yeah, just because she she wanted to. She wanted she wanted that at one point. And she didn't she had a different perception of him before the marriage. Yeah. Robert was the top warrior in the Seven Kingdoms. He's kind of a badass and then he yeah. just start, started drinking and he was that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He killed Rhaegar in single combat. That's crazy. Yeah. And okay, this is actually the last thing I just I finally got to the end of this episode. The only thing we haven't talked about is do you think that there's possibly anything on Damon's neck or chest? Because that is oh, yeah. some internet chatter that there has been. His neck does kind of look a little wrinkly, including his chest. If you look back in the episode, he's usually wearing collars or he's wearing a hood and you don't really see that area ever in the episode. There was the whole stuff last episode where they confirmed that the crab feeder had grayscale. We know that Targaryens can get grayscale. It's happened in the family. Yeah. Do you think that there's anything there with that? To also add that there is never a mention of Damon having grayscale in the book. We did talk about a lot more depth of this in the last pod, but yeah, I think that's Good to bring back up. It never was mentioned that he had grayscale. Yeah, i i don't think I don't think he has grayscale. I I mean, it's it's a possibility, but it's probably just a scar from the fucking two and a half years of war he was in. He got yeah, shot in the that's fucking. What I'm saying. He got neck. shot. That's a good point, man. He got shot yeah. a bunch. He got a bunch of arrows, and he could have had burn marks. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That's what I think it was too. When I first saw it, I thought, okay, that looks kind of like scars. I assume you wrote that down, too, when we were doing the... I didn't read the, the piece, but probably said that, um, right? Scars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, and then, honestly, that just made me think of one other thing. Give me a second here to remember. It was... Uh, I don't know if I said sc- scars, but I just said there's concerning marks on his skin or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember. I might have said scars. I saw some comments saying that... Viserys wasn't necessarily surprised to even hear Damon say this, that he was wanting to marry. And he didn't have like a strong reaction really after Damon was saying, it's a thing that we do in our family. And I, I did want to bring up the point that Viserys' parents were brother and sister. His grandparents were also brother and sister. It's it's literally so common that I don't think that it's 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 just for him. It's like, well, dude, you're my brother. That's my daughter. Not yeah. necessarily that it's like... That they're related. Yeah, related. Yeah, as much. It is It is such a thing in their family. And his parents were brother and sister. <laughs> and he yeah. married his own cousin, who was, you know, his, his first cousin. From, That's all you need to say is his first cousin. But like, even think about it from this way. It's his first cousin on top of the fact that, that his cousin's mom was brother and sister 
To his parents. To his parents. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's even closer than first cousin. It's even closer, dude. I don't know what you would even call that. It's like a sister cousin. Yeah, it's something different. It's some other level of Targaryen incest. Yeah. Just incest in general. And then his grandparents. Double first cousin. Were brother and sister. Yeah. Jaharis was married to his sister. Damn. They got to have some deformities creeping up or something. Oh, dude. I mean. Bro, that's like fucking straight up like the royal family. In, in The fucking royal family of uh, England in real life. They're fucking yeah. marrying well, their cousins and know. shit. I don't know anything about them. No, don't, that, that, don't care about them. But yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, fair. And this is the other thing actually too that I forgot to explain. Um, I had another question that I'm sorry. I can't remember who submitted it or when it was submitted but someone was asking if we could explain why did Viserys get picked over Rhaenerys Targaryen because they're both first cousins and the reason why the reason why they didn't pick her or why she had a better right to the throne is because her dad was Jaehaerys's firstborn son her dad who died and Viserys's dad what's his name Balerion or Balon Balon yeah Balon he was the second born son. So he was named heir after his first son died. And so technically by the right of lineage, she would have a better claim because she was born to the first heir. And then they did a vote on it. They did a vote on it in this show, right? Too? They did that in the book for sure. The Great Council. It was like everyone yeah. got a vote because Jaehaerys couldn't decide. And so he let the realm decide. He did that in this show too, right? It wasn't him picking I don't think the common people voted, but I think it was, like, the nobles. And no, shit. no, just all the high house. Like, yeah. he called everyone to vote on it. Yeah. yeah. Damn, they're so getting they kind of close to democracy. And then they're like, nope. <laughs> Can't have that. It's close. Yep. Okay, so that's it, man. I think we wrapped it up pretty good here. All right, everyone. So that's our House of the Dragon Episode 4 podcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Culture Crave, at Culture Crave Pod at thrones underscore facts go leave us a rating review on apple and spotify even if you've already done before go back and do a rating and review again it helps us re-rank and get more people to listen to our podcast that's it next week we'll hopefully back doing lord of the rings the first couple episodes with our with luke goosens and we're still going to be of course doing house of dragon episode five